All right, so welcome everybody. I'm happy to be here. Uh, this will be a short lighting talk about metaprogramming in Elixir. A brief introduction, basically, because it's kind of late. Uh, so my name is Kamil Lelonek, and there is information about me you can find on slide. Uh, I use, the, the, I think the most important uh, thing for you is that I use Elixir in production in a couple of applications and they earn real money. So quick question now, who else use Elixir in production at the moment? <laughs> okay. Uh, so what I'm going to tell you about, well, a few concepts uh, are supposed to be discussed here. You will learn about macros, the basics of macros. You will understand code and unquote differences and you will see some examples of DSLs. There are basically two rules regarding macros in Elixir. Uh, don't write macros on your own and use macros gratuitously. The second rule was introduced by Chris McCord, the creator of Phoenix Elixir framework. He warns us not to abuse macros. Basically, what are macros? Uh, the simplest definition is that uh, a code that writes code. Uh, and where are macros in Elixir? Well, Elixir itself is built with macros, uh, like if def module count def unless assert, they are all macros. And how does how do macros work? Um, Elixir macros get access to um, the syntax tree of a piece of code without evaluating this code then macros can process it and return another syntax tree that will be evaluated finally. Here you can see the definition of if macro. Uh, yeah, the first line is def macro if condition closes do. Uh, we just delegate the execution to an appropriate build if function using pattern matching. Uh, later on we do the same with specified else return value as a nil. And finally, uh, we use case statement to evaluate a specific code based on the given condition. Of course, we also handled unmatched uh, definition. This is the example of how we use this macro in our code. Result string will be returned when condition evaluates the trophy value. On the other hand, uh, we can pass either false or nil condition and nil be returned as a result. Let's see L structure in action right now. So you already know the syntax kind of it from another languages and you know what's going on. And the same as in previous example, we can use do and block syntax, of course. Mm, this is the example how we handle unmatched uh, values so when we pass otherwise instead of else we get the error we saw in the implementation however when you use do and block syntax we get another error because it, it's it will try to evaluate otherwise as a function and this function is not known not defined how does macro expanding uh, work we start with the simple condition like unless then it's transformed to if else control flow, but it's still macro as you already know. And finally, we get this case statement as you saw on the very beginning. And this is case is Elixir building block and it's just evaluated. Okay, so what can macros do? Mm, when you firstly compile your code, you will see only this compilation message. When you run the code, you see only the message at uh, runtime because as I told you, macros has access to code at compile time. Why to use macros? Uh, we can find many cases for that. The most important part is extending language to your needs. And the second thing may be boilerplate removal, which I will focus on in, in this presentation later on. Uh, of course, you can use macros to, for example, to better performance and many other cases. 
Uh, Elixir code can be represented entirely by Elixir's own data structures. Uh, quote, return abstract syntax tree of an expression. As you can see here, the complex at the first side Elixir tuple is basically very simple condition if true do one plus two. Abstract syntax tree, as I said, is representation of an expression. Uh, it's basically a series of three element tuples. Mm, the first one is always an atom representing a function or another tuple. And the second element is metadata, context, environment, name it whatever. And the last element is ju just arguments for the function call. Sometimes it may be necessary to inject some other chunk of code inside abstract syntax tree representation uh, when you try to revert some generated tuple you will get what you write on the very beginning and let's define some macro that takes one value uh, this is def macro run uh, as you can see we're printing value twice in a regular way and inside quote block so keep in mind that you want to print some external value inside quote block, you need to unquote it. Mm, now let's create a simple module, import our macro and use it. We create function run without any arguments and we use inside it run macro that we imported. And when you compile it, you see the message during compilation and when you run it, you see this uh, message we print when we uh, evaluating our macro. Use is a macro that provides common API for extension. Uh, when you write use, it invokes using function from the given model, and that's basically it. Imagine a message that can be either sent, read, received, delivered, and so on. Some models have attribute that can take only a few predef predefined values like uh, names of days, statuses for messages and so on. Uh, that these values almost never changes. Xnumerator gives you a handy way to define enumerables, uh, these types that can be used together with your database. What you have to do is to use Xnumerator uh, in your custom type that you want to represent by fixed values. Here we have status for a message that can be sent, read, received, delivered. And that's it, you need to define custom type like that. Then if you want to have table with this type, you just define it as a string. Xnumerator will handle coercion for you. And finally, in your schema, you define a field with the type you created before, as you can see, message status. And now you can test it if you want to see possible values for uh, message statuses. You can print it like that. However, when you try now to insert invalid status, you'll get the error because invalid, it doesn't match any, any status you defined previously. Uh, here is the entire implementation. As you can see, there's a lot of code that you would need to write by yourself. And this is the case I was talking before. Uh, using macros will let you avoid lots of boilerplate. Mm. And this is just a simple DSL uh, you can use in your code thanks to that. If you want to learn more about metaprogramming, Chris McCourt wrote an awesome book about it. And there are also two videos with uh, description of metaprogramming, macros, and so on. Okay, so the last announcement. I'm speaking tomorrow at Warsaw MidJS. So if you are interested in front-end technology, just come by. And thank you. <laughs>